But our next guest, Jason Strudwick, longtime friend of ours, former NHLer with the Islanders, Canucks, Blackhawks, Rangers, and Oilers, 674 games now of uh, TSN 1260 Edmonton. How you doing, Struds? Good to see you. Good to see you guys. How you doing? Good. Listen, before we get into all the hockey talk and the free agent frenzy, last time I saw you face-to-face was in the Orlando airport. I was just leaving Disney World. You were just going. And I thought several times these NBA players that got to spend two and a half months at Disney World would be a dream for me. Did you think that at all through those NBA playoffs at all? Well, well, you know, I love the NBA playoffs. I watched a ton of them. Uh, that final series is incredible. But you think about the amount of time those guys spent in, in that, you know, isolation. And I know you're with your buddies. You can't see your family. Uh, that'd be really difficult. Uh, I'm not sure they're going on many rides. But, um, <laughs> you know, to win a championship in this situation, I think Rod is pretty tough. For sure. And this is why I think they love you so much in Edmonton, not the least of which is you're a good guy. But you can provide the the perspective of a player. I mean, what were the guys saying to you about the Edmonton bubble bubble for the NHL? And what did you think the NBA players were going through? Cause you heard it. People are saying, Oh, you're getting millions. You can do it no matter what. No, it's important to them. doesn't matter how much money you're making. So what was your take on that? It just nailed it. It's in the mind, right? And you know what? I, I was trying to put myself in the situation. I had three young kids, um, you know, and it's, it's a questionable time in the world. There's a lot of things going on, uh, you know, all different things politically and obviously with the pandemic. Um, so to leave them behind and your wife and your kids and say, okay, well, I'm just going to take off and go chase this dream winning a cup. You know, there's a lot of time to think um, when you're alone like that. There's a lot of time to, to think about things are going well or not well. And, you know, sometimes the kids can be a welcome distraction. Your wife is obviously a great companion or family or friends, whatever that is. They didn't have that. So I think it was really unique, and I, I, I don't agree at all with people who say this year was uh, an asterisk year for, for winning a championship. I think it was harder because uh, there's, there's the physical part. Uh, yes, there's no traveling, but the emotional part, I think you leave a, a big part of you have been at home thinking about it, uh, what was going on. I think in both the NBA and the NHL, we saw players and teams that just, just didn't have it, and uh, they were committed to, to, to the level that was needed that other teams were that ultimately won the championships. Yeah, and I certainly will not name names, but I know some big-name NHL guys that were sitting in the bubble and said, what am I doing here? Because they got young kids at home, and they didn't opt out like Tuka Rask, but mentally they did, and they, by the way, they didn't go all the way to the end. Which, speaking up, nor did the Golden Knights. So what's your take on their players reportedly upset at lack of loyalty with Nate Schmidt being moved out so they could sign Petrangelo? You know, you become really emotionally attached to your teammates, um, you know, and, and you think, hey, this is our group, this is what we're going to do. And also, out of nowhere, you know, Petrangelo shows up, who's a really good D-man. Like, let's be honest, the, the Vegas Golden Knights have no one like him. Um, you know, I like Nate Schmidt a lot, but, you know, that's just the way it is. You, you're there, the, the GM, is, his job is to build the best team possible. Just like each individual player is to build themselves up the best they can physically, emotionally, skill wise, all that stuff. So, you know, I, 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 I sympathize, but at the end of the day, you know, even championship teams, there's changes. You look at Tampa, they're trying to get rid of a salary. So, you know, I, I understand it. I, I respect that loyalty, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You're trying to win a championship. And if I'm still there today, if I'm still Vegas Golden Knight, I'm thrilled that I have Petra Angel, a right shot Stanley Cup captain leading defenseman in my group, and I'll get over it pretty damn quick. <laughs> Struds, think about this for a second. You probably, maybe you realized it as a player, but I definitely know you would have figured it out when once you retired. Because I've had a, several football players come to me and say, this coach yelled in my face. This coach embarrassed me in front of my teammates. This coach did this. And I had to sit him down and say, guys, because that coach has to explain himself to the head coach who has to explain himself to the general manager who has to explain himself to the owner. All these guys, Kelly McCrimmon's responsible to Bill Foley. You don't think he wasn't answering questions as why they didn't get to the Stanley Cup final? Guaranteed he was. Yeah, 100%. You know what? I, I the, the hardest coach I had was Mark Crawford. And, man, he was hard on me. And I always thought, what is this guy's problem? Like, I, I try hard. I show up in shape. I, I do what he asks. But, you know what? Later on, I realized that he was molding me to the way he thought I had to play in the NHL. And he was right. You know, at the time, I may have didn't love it, but he was right. And, uh, you know, I was a better player for it and a better person and stronger for it. Um, But, you know, at the end of the day, you want to be part of a team that's trying to improve, trying to get better all the time. And you're looking at the Blackhawks, you know, you hear the Jonathan Taze and Patrick Kane or some of those guys aren't thrilled with some of their moves. That's a little harder to swallow. You know, it's a little harder to swallow. You added Alex Petrangelo. I mean, the guy is an absolute stud and has proven it. Eats 22 minutes a night, plays every situation, right shot defenseman. Any team in the league would be dying to get this guy. And sometimes uh, when you bring a guy like that, there's subtractions. But... 
Um, if anyone should be pissed, it should be Nate Schmidt. The other guys, you're sad your buddy leaves, but you can still see him in the summer. Let's get Petrangelo back there, feeding me these passes on my breakout. If I'm, you know, Pacioretty or I'm uh, whoever they get, Stone, all those guys should be thrilled. You said it all when you said it's the general manager's job to put together a winning team, not break up your little party guys. Like, I I just think they would have realized it by now because, frankly, Struts, this was going on in junior. Now, in Kamloops, you guys didn't move a lot of pieces because you didn't have to, but this is, this is not new. Have the players changed to the degree that this would be breaking news to them, that there's no loyalty from above? I just, I'm having a tough time getting my head around it. Well, I think you have to also look at me from the other side. We're not giving enough respect to the fact that they're a close team. And I think that as a GM, you want to hear they're close. You know, um, on every team, you hear players where they don't necessarily love everybody and they don't get along. But when you have that situation where these guys are close and they are pissed off that guys are leaving, I think as a GM, I want to hear that. It doesn't change my idea. They're still going to add these guys. I mean, they're still going to add these top players. But it tells me from the outside, they are a really close team. I see a lot of upset fans around the NHL in this free agency. Really, the only ones that are happy, I think, are Flames fans. Um, who's got a right to be more upset, Oiler fans or Canucks fans? Because I see Fire Benning is still trending on Twitter, but they weren't happy that they had to settle on Mike Smith. Um, what's your take on what those teams did? Yeah, so but is that always trending? I don't think it's ever not trending, Fire Benning. That guy, guy's been right. under pressure for the whole time. Um, well, let's start with the Oilers. I think the Oilers, they added a lot of nice offense in that. Barry, we know what he can do. He can move the puck well. Um, you know, he's a puck transporter. You know, his defense isn't great, but it's not bad. Then Kyle Turris, I think he's same. You know, he can he can make some plays. I don't see him as a really hard defender. We already know what Ennis has been like. I think he adds offense to this group. And then you get to Mike Smith. So I, I feel the one area they need to be is a little bit harder to play against. And that doesn't mean running around and hitting guys. I'm looking at the final last year between Dallas and Tampa. And you see how much those players pressured the puck, whether it's Yanmark, Calgiano. Um, you can kind of go through that that whole lineup, how hard those guys were were on the other team and putting you know sticks in people's lanes and all that kind of stuff. That's a huge part of it. So I don't see the Oilers adding to that. I think we're going to have a lot of fun watching this year. You know, these games could be 6-4 or 6-3, and who knows who's going to win or lose. Um, you know, Mike Smith, he was a cost-effective solution. The Oilers don't have a lot of cap space, but this time next year, you know, whenever this next season ends, you look at the Oilers on cap friendly. They have a lot of contracts coming off. They have, um, I think it's Benoit Pouliot's 1.3 million coming off. Sakara's buyout goes from like 2.3 million to 1 million. So they're going to get some free money. They have a lot of guys coming off on one year contracts. So he's, Ken Holland's trying to get some flexibility here. He's never had that since he's taken over from the Oilers. On the other side, the Canucks, um, you know, the Markstrom one's a tough one. And I, I see Calgary Flames are excited or fans are excited. I'm a little worried about that contract long term. I did not think that had been a good move for them to Oilers to bring in Markstrom. Um, but for the Flames, you, you, you bring in Nate Schmidt, who I have a lot of time for. And if he plays with Ken Hughes, that could be a really nice puck moving um, pair. And I think they could find a lot of things that, to do well. Um, but, you know, the, the one that kind of gets at me is the Toffoli, or, or you're choosing um, Jake for Tanner or Toffoli. You know, uh, Jake's a little bit younger, um, inconsistent in his play. To fully when I see he signed for with the, the, the Montreal uh, Habitant, I'm like, ooh, that's a pretty good deal. And you pretty much know what you're getting from him. Whereas Jake, you know, there's always those whispers about his conditioning and, and his, his commitment to the team. So I think Vancouver, you know what? Uh, we were second guessing when we traded for JT Miller last year. That trained out, turned out really well. So Benning, uh, get used to those fire Benning uh, things on uh, Twitter. But I think he's done some pretty decent work. Well, I also get that it's not – I had a GM, like, right in my face go, it's not fantasy football, Rod. Like, I think the fans <laughs> don't understand how it all works. But I do think the Braden Holtby, Edmonton older marriage would have been one made in heaven as a Lloyd Minster guy. But I also know he didn't come as cheap as Mike Smith. But I can't let you go without a take on Taylor Hall. I feel it was a where-were-you moment, like when JFK was shot or when Elvis died. Where were you when Taylor Hall signed with the Buffalo Sabres? Because I – I didn't see that coming. Yeah, I was actually on the ice with my kids, or one of my, my daughter's hockey team, the Mighty Comets, uh, coming to an arena near you, uh, U9 hockey. But, um, no, we, you know, and, I, and someone mentioned, they said Taylor Hall signed with Buffalo. I'm like, what, the Bills? Like, I, I couldn't believe it. It was with the Sabres. So, you know, but once I sat down and started thinking about it, you know, for Taylor Hall to have a right shot centerman, um, who's good, who wants, who can skate and who wants to feed the puck. Now, Jake or uh, not Jake, Jack can sh shoot and score, but he wants to pass that puck. 
Um, so to have those two up there, that's a massive line. You can put a, a, a garbage can beside those two guys. You're going to get production. Then you, you go on the second line, who's there? Well, now you have Eric Stahl, you know, and who fits in with him? Uh, is it Skinner? Uh, do they put Reinhardt down there? Maybe put someone else on that top line. You know, those other two guys will have some chemistry. And then you look at the back end. You, know, you bring in some of the guys they brought in. Goaltending is still a real question mark. But I think the thing that clinched it for Taylor was Ralph Kruger. Um, I had Ralph Kruger as an assistant coach here in Edmonton. I was really impressed with him. The way he talks, um, the way he handles people. He's a motivator. He doesn't tear you down. That, that's everything you want in today's coach. Um, so for the Sabres, it's a great a great get, getting Taylor Hall, uh, try to get him and J uh, Jack Eichel going. Then for Taylor Hall, you're on a team that has you know nowhere to go but up. Um, he's going to get points playing with Jack Eichel. He creates on his own, and Jack can help set him up as well. And then he's back in the same position next summer when maybe we have a little bit more normal um, NHL as far as what what a salary cap might look like and teams might have a little more flexibility. So I actually think both – it's rare that I say this in free agency – that both teams are winning or both the team and the player are winning here. And then most importantly, the fans of the Sabres, you know, all, all of them there in, uh, in, in Buffalo. So I was surprised, but when you sit down and really work through it, uh, I see where it kind of makes sense from his, his perspective. Well, I saw him saying on sports center, this is what was best for me term and money. And I'm thinking, and then you guys wonder why there's no loyalty. <laughs> Everybody's doing what's best for each side. And I get it. Oh, by the way, from John in Winnipeg, John Ohm, um, he says, man, does this dude know hockey? Great guest. Go Jets, go. <laughs> well, that's why we have him on. And Struds, listen, if my report is true, that Edmonton could be a bubble city for the CFL next year, you'll be probably we could get you in there to a luxury suite to watch Canada's team and Cody Fajardo with Saskatchewan playing in the bubble in Edmonton. I could think of not much finer than that. Well, I'll have to bring him corn dogs after every game. Isn't that what he <laughs> That's likes? That's right. Exactly. All right, Strud, you're the best. Thanks for the, the time. Have a great day, my friend. See you, buddy. See you, Strudwick, TSN 1260 Edmonton, joining us from the City of Champions. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.